Hello, thank you all for joining me today. My name is Vasilos Bausis uh, from ECMWF, and my presentation is about uh, how ECMWF uh, built the European Weather Cloud infrastructure with open source uh, software uh, journey from its start until today and its uh, future. So the agenda of this presentation is as follows. First, I will talk about ECMWF, which uh, stands for European Center for Medium Range uh, Weather Forecast. Its mission, ECMWF's uh, IT infrastructure, HPC and cloud, and uh, about the new uh, data center, which is being uh, built in Bologna, Italy. Then I will uh, present the European Weather Cloud infrastructure, its objectives, architecture, use cases, and then discuss about the Ceph and uh, OpenStack uh, clusters, our experience, decision made, and problems encountered. Finally, I will present our uh, future next uh, steps. So, ECMWF is an inter intergovernmental organization established in 1975, has 34 uh, states as members and cooperating states, 22 members and uh, 12 uh, cooperating states. The headquarters is in Reading, UK, and uh, soon our data center will be moved to Bologna, Italy. ECMWF's uh, core mission is to produce a numerical weather uh, forecast and uh, monitor the Earth uh, system, and carry out also scientific uh, technical research to improve uh, uh, forecast skills, and um, to maintain an archive of meteorological data. Also, ECMWF operates two services from uh, European Union's uh, Copernicus Earth Observation uh, Program, namely COUNTS, which stands for um, uh, Copernicus Atmospheric Monitor Service and Climate uh, uh, Change Service, C3S, and also contributes to Emergency Management Service, also from Copernicus. Similar, we have is an operation and numerical weather prediction center and the research institute and the 24-7 operational center. Twice per day, operational weather forecasts are generated and disseminated globally. Similar, we have also assimilates uh, 60 to 80 million uh, observations per day and uh, maintains an archive of uh, petabytes containing both uh, uh, observations and the forecast data. Our HPC facility um, is a global, uh, one of the largest uh, weather sites. Um, also, our cloud infrastructure includes, besides the C3S uh, and CAMS, as I said before, Wikio, which is one of the European Commission uh, DIAS, which stands for Data and the Information Access Service, and the European Weather Cloud Infrastructure, which is the topic of this presentation. Finally, we maintain an archive of uh, climatological data with a size of uh, 25, 25 uh, petabytes with a daily growth of uh, 250 terabytes. So this is the graphical representation of our production workflow from uh, data acquisition, as we see here, to pre-processing, where um, observations are gathered from various sources, ground stations, satellites, aircraft, ships, etc., and the filter and normalized, and then provide us an input to our forecast uh, model. After the model run, the product generation creates and tailor, the tailored model output for our end users. And finally, the data archived and disseminated through the internet, list lines, and the regional meteorological data communication network, RNDCN, and to the end users. So this diagram shows more or less the two identical gray HC40 clusters on top of the on top of this uh, slide and how these are connected to our uh, data handling system, internal also systems, and how these are connected to the internet and RMDCN. Soon, our data center will, uh, will be moved to Bologna, and, um, which is currently built in Bologna, Italy, and our new HP system will take uh, over uh, existing ECMWS mission critical uh, forecast services and the production service for meteorological research activities roughly in 2021. In a resilient uh, overall system configuration, the new HPC will provide several thousands of uh, compute and post-processing uh, dual uh, socket uh, nodes, high bandwidth uh, access from all computer resources via a native Lustre parallel uh, file system mounts. Compared to the uh, current HPC facility, the new HPC system will enable a significant resolution increases in the operational data assimilation and forecasting system, and as well as substantially increased capacity for research activities whenever resources are not being used towards operational forecasting. The new system will deliver an increase in sustained performance by a factor of about five compared to current ECMWF's high, high performance computing facility. This will enable a range of advances and contribute to uh, forecast improvements. So the European Weather Cloud, it 
started uh, three years ago with a pilot uh, project in January 2019 in collaboration between, which is a collaboration between ECMWF and uh, UMATSAT with a basic goal to bring the computation resources cloud closer to the big data that we have, uh, which uh, comprises meteorological archive, sa satellite data, so that the users from our member states to run their uh, data processing close to our data source, storage and HPC, which is complementary to their current access to our HPC computing facilities. Also, it's aimed at all European with the cloud is aiming at building a cloud federation with uh, member states. So the problem, the, the project uh, includes building the uh, necessary infrastructure, organizing, implementing user cases, and addressing technical challenges, policy challenges, also governance challenges. ECMWF's uh, uh, pilot infrastructure was uh, built with open source uh, software, Ceph and OpenStack using TPO. So in this uh, current uh, state of the infrastructure, comprising two uh, uh, open standard cluster, one built with the uh, OpenStack Rocky version and another one with uh, Usuri. So both clusters, their under cloud, uh, under cloud uh, system are a virtual machine hosted in the same uh, physical host, use the same the same physical and logical networking, same uh, provision network, uh, internal, external network, VLANs, et, et cetera, and are accessible through the same cloud federation orchestration platform. User access is totally transparent, so users cannot uh, identify if they are running on one of these uh, two clusters. And uh, both clusters connect to um, Ceph cluster through Ceph public network interfaces, which is the same subnet as the two uh, public uh, uh, network of uh, OpenStack cluster. The Ceph cluster uh, is accessed from anywhere from uh, our LAN and uh, through our external uh, load balancer from the internet, using uh, also uh, access is only to Redos uh, gateway. Ceph provides block and object storage to both OpenStack uh, cluster. The total uh, Hardware of uh, the current configuration comprises uh, approximately about uh, 3,000 uh, vCPUs. The RAM of uh, both clusters is about 21 uh, terabytes. Storage is about one petabyte with uh, HDD and SSD. And uh, we have also uh, in the new cluster built on Suri, we have uh, 10 uh, NVIDIA Tesla V100. So in this slide, actually, if you remember from the previous one, uh, it depicts where the European with the cloud infrastructure uh, sits within our uh, and communicates with our internal system. OpenStack has two provider networks, one towards the internet and another one connecting OpenStack to our data handling system, HPC and ECMWF internal systems. They are totally, uh, these two networks are totally separated and the VMs can bind to these two, either with a direct uh, attached uh, NICs and network interfaces or using uh, floating IP addresses. These two provider networks uh, give a lot of flexibility to the workflows running on the uh, VMs. So in the current, uh, in this uh, slide, actually more than clearly, this block diagram depicts uh, um, the physical and logical connectivity of OpenStack to Ceph, internal systems like a data handling system and HPC. Access uh, directly to the internet is uh, pr provided through our load balancer here to the Redos uh, gateway. At the bottom of uh, here, it's the Ceph uh, cluster, which is available in the phases um, are accessible from OpenStack clusters and as uh, well from the various internal systems. Redos uh, gateway is also accessible from uh, internet through our uh, load balancer. The FQDN for uh, this is storage.ecmwf.european weather cloud, which is the uh, domain name of uh, European weather cloud, naturally. And then uh, at the top, uh, top right are the two uh, OpenStack uh, clusters with their public network towards the internet. Below is the data network, which uh, connects uh, OpenStack to HPC, to our internal uh, systems like data handling system and meteorological archive systems and our uh, dissemination system. Finally, our uh, users can have access to the equivalent infrastructure at the uh, UMATSAT through the internet and uh, to our um, uh, Ceph and uh, OpenStack and internal systems. So the main use cases, actually the users are, um, it's uh, the European with the cloud supported by uh, its member uh, 34 uh, countries. Uh, also uh, European with the cloud has a potential for cross discipline disciplinary research uh, and uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence using climate and uh, weather data to other research uh, domains like uh, finance, uh, GIS and, uh, and other um, domains. 
also enables uh, new research and development uh, of new services by providing uh, computational resources to ECMWF's uh, member states to run their uh, data uh, processing close to the data sources, uh, storage, our archive, and HPC, which is complementary to our current uh, access to uh, HPC computing facilities. Also, we provide uh, pre-configured virtual resources for performing big data analytics and uh, machine learning. So a user will be able to instantiate and uh, pre-configure Apache Spark uh, cluster or TensorFlow uh, cluster and uh, perform his uh, computation. Also, a user-friendly environment with a pre-installed uh, pre-configured software that um, uh, for development uh, data access tools, and standardized data access API that would span across many sp scientific uh, disciplines to enable users to access and provide uh, data sets from different uh, sources and uh, fields. Also, readily available cloud uh, and HPC resources would allow uh, ECMWF member states and the research community to access and process uh, forecast products in a timely manner, and therefore weather forecast and products will reach faster than users like uh, European uh, citizens. And not only. Also, third party users uh, could uh, use the standardized uh, data access API to prototype and deploy operational software with value added uh, products, uh, services to industry, research, and society. So, some of the uh, uh, use cases now we currently run in our infrastructure is from uh, DWD, the German Metallical Service use case on offering notebooks to train and develop the icon uh, model of the European, which runs uh, on our infrastructure. The KNMI, the Regal uh, Netherlands uh, Meteorological Institute, is the, with uh, Climate Explorer, which also runs in our infrastructure. Oxford University offering a Ju Jupyter notebook environments for machine learning and weather and climate data sets. And also, uh, because there was an um, earthquake uh, back in uh, March 2020, we support all the creation meteorological service to host that uh, European uh, uh, weather cloud, uh, those components of their IT infrastructure that uh, could not uh, uh, run in, uh, in their local infrastructure. So the first, let's start with uh, how is uh, the, the different components of the European weather cloud uh, infrastructure uh, were built. Uh, CEF is uh, built and maintained separately to OpenStack, as I mentioned before. That is, uh, that gives us a lot of flexibility in building different uh, clusters on the same CEF storage. The operating system of this uh, is uh, CentOS 7, the latest, and the current version is uh, the latest uh, version of uh, Nautilus. We have um, the hardware, it's uh, uh, some uh, Dell system, uh, and the storage is, um, has 26 uh, um, disks, and the total is um, giving us about uh, uh, one petabyte of uh, storage. Networking, we have uh, 225 uh, uh, NICs for each uh, network for the cluster and for another one uh, pair for the public uh, NICs, and they have uh, 192 uh, gigabytes of uh, RAM. Totally, we deployed uh, 23 monitors, uh, five managers, three gateways, which are uh, load balanced, and we have uh, almost we have, uh, uh, 50, uh, 552 OSDs. The first build was uh, about, a, about a one and a half years ago and expanded to its current uh, capacity about uh, six months ago. The, we had uh, actually, because we wanted to make it and to make sure that we provide the best service with a cluster, with this cluster, we had a third party validation with uh, some, and the suggestion were some minor improvements and we have uh, performed in our cluster. Both uh, um, open uh, stack cluster use the same safety infrastructure and actually the same um, RBD uh, pools. So besides the usual ATD failures, Ceph uh, performs well. We plan to gradually move from uh, uh, to CentOS 8 operating system for the hosting uh, systems and, uh, and then upgrade to uh, the latest uh, Ceph Octopus, probably by the end of uh, uh, this year. And uh, we plan to do it uh, that in a live cluster. Actually, we're gonna plan, first we're gonna do a lot of uh, uh, testing in our development environment, and then migrate our cluster. So about OpenStack now, the first cluster was built in September uh, 2019, based on Rocky with a triplo installer, and uh, at the same time we develop we created another development uh, environment with OpenStack and Ceph uh, clusters. Uh, 
actually uh, which identical to the um, uh, main cluster. Our configuration experience, so deployment about 1,600 uh, vCPUs with uh, 21 terabyte of RAM was um, straightforward. External Ceph cluster worked almost uh, with a minimum effort by simply configure the, uh, the Ceph uh, config uh, YAML with no uh, a lot of uh, modification, just the IP addresses of the monitors and uh, some uh, and the keys, and that work out of the box. Uh, the two external networks, one public uh, facing another um, for fast access to our uh, 250 petabyte archive was straightforward, but uh, most of our VMs, uh, VMs are attached to both external networks. Uh, so we don't use, most of the times we don't use a uh, floating IP address. And, uh, for the for the external networks, so that was a challenging um, uh, problem for not challenging issue for the VMs routing with because on the switches we don't use uh, dynamic routing, and the workaround was to use uh, DHCP hooks and uh, by configure our VM uh, routing before we um, uh, make this uh, available the images to the users. Our images can work without any problem with any uh, OpenStack infrastructure, so there are minor modifications and there's no uh, thing that prevents these images to be used uh, elsewhere. There were some uh, problems also that were encountered with uh, NIC uh, body interfaces in, in the beginning and, um, uh, and in conjunction with the configuration of our switches. And then we decided not to use a LACP configuration and we had only a single um, a NIC deployment for OpenStack. And have also the, provi the provided uh, network is uh, where it was um, separate. We encountered some uh, problems, uh, known problems with the load balancer. So one of these, uh, the one that I uh, present here uh, from uh, um, Launchpad. Uh, so the problem there, it was that Octavia uh, certificates were overriding each time that you redeploy your cluster. So lo load balancer was not uh, properly working there. And then, as soon as we uh, found some uh, workarounds, uh, we updated our uh, system, live system, and uh, we moved the whole cluster from a single NIC uh, deployment to multiple NIC uh, deployment on a live system, totally transparent to user without, uh, with a zero downtime. The, ho the whole first cluster uh, again was re redeployed, and the network was uh, pre reconfigured with a distributed virtual routing for better network performance. In general, the performance was uh, good and we're happy about that and uh, we haven't uh, had any problem since uh, September. So in March, uh, we added some uh, hardware to our OpenStack and Ceph cluster and we decided to investigate uh, upgrading the newest uh, version of OpenStack. First, uh, we converted our Rocky underground to other uh, cloud to a VM for better management and also the Shui as well. And, as a, and also as a safe net uh, for backups and recovery if something went sideways. From March to May, actually, we investigated and tested upgrading to Stain, first under cloud and then over cloud upgrade to, te to a test environment. Migration from Docker, actually, we admired the, the installer wh while we were moving from Docker to Podman. It was very interesting and uh, straightforward. But uh, updating was uh, possible from, to move from uh, uh, Rocky to Stain and then to Train and uh, finally to Suri. But uh, due to the uh, upgrade that the latest uh, version of OpenStack were based on the uh, CentOS, we decided to uh, jump some uh, uh, upgrades, updates, and uh, that's why we decided to use Osuri, which was released in May. And actually it was also based on the uh, CentOS 8. So that was, uh, we made a jump from Rocky to Suri, so it was uh, three uh, versions jump. And we dis and we deploy the new version using Suri. So, so the second cluster uh, first built was thirtieth uh, of uh, May, twenty twenty. So, if you, this is a screenshot that uh, we took uh, when we deployed the the new cluster, that was seventeen days uh, uh, ago. It was the official release of Suri. This cluster was a plain vanilla configuration, which means that uh, even though that the network uh, was properly configured with uh, OVN, uh, with provider networks and everything uh, properly and 25 nodes, but um, we haven't had any integration with uh, storage with SF, 
as uh, you can see uh, and analyze uh, below. So at that time, we tried to evaluate uh, the, um, the cluster, the new cluster with uh, 25 uh, nodes. So we ran some tests and we found some uh, uh, problems. And actually when we try to um, add some more uh, features, we had some other problems. So the new uh, built uh, some uh, of the problems, uh, uh, changes or uh, uh, challenges were that um, uh, the new uh, building method on, uh, with using Assembly was rather than uh, Mistal had some uh, hiccups like um, the user to used to deploy the stack. So to, instead of stack, it was a hit admin. So there are some uh, implications on that. CentOS 8, the uh, base operating system for both the whole system and uh, all the containers was something that uh, quite to uh, understand and uh, master very fast. Also, uh, we configured with uh, OVS and not OVN, uh, finally, uh, because we found that um, there are some uh, implications regarding uh, assigning a floating IP address. So we found some problems and uh, we reported and we found uh, a lot of, and we, get, we got a lot of uh, help from the community. And one of those, it was that uh, uh, Octavia and uh, Seth, they had the similar um, uh, problems and uh, that uh, was because the uh, the permission issues of the assembly user which prevent the read write access to the configuration of the folder of the over cloud which usually co uh, co uh, located at the config download over cloud octavia or Cepha ansible uh, you can you cannot uh, write on this uh, uh, folder so we found a workaround and we managed to deploy both octavia and Ceph. And the other one, it was uh, with OVN, it was the assignment of uh, if you had the uh, DVR and uh, if, uh, you wanted to also assign the floating IP address. The problem is that uh, when uh, using OVN, floating IP address uh, do not work. If trying to connect from a system in the same uh, public subnet, it did work, which was a bit uh, confusing because it was on the same VLAN. Probably this worked uh, due to the fact that uh, the problem is that the external MAC uh, address should not be set in the NAT uh, table of the floating IP address, which belongs to uh, the logical port of the uh, VLAN uh, of uh, the tenant uh, logical uh, switch. So in initially this issue was fixed uh, in a previous uh, version of uh, uh, OpenStack uh, uh, OVN uh, network in uh, 402 and then to 510 and then again to 601. But again, it was not something that uh, at that time could um, uh, resolve. So we deploy everything with uh, OVS. So currently regarding GPUs, the, we, the configuration of uh, the GPUs was uh, all straightforward. We had some uh, problem with IPv6. Uh, we haven't implemented IPv6 to our story cluster. So the problem is that during the uh, booting time, uh, we had the problem with uh, OVS uh, trying to bind to IPv6 addresses, and that was uh, resulting in increased uh, booting time. A workaround was to explicitly remove uh, IPv6 configures to all our uh, GPU nodes. All nodes with uh, GPU also were installed are, are as normal compute nodes, and uh, uh, we configured Nova config with uh, our Ansible playbook, playbooks. It was uh, much easier to configure uh, in this way the GPU profiles offered uh, without changing uh, the compute nodes or with the redeployment and things like that. So as you can see on the on this uh, table, we um, installed uh, uh, GPUs were installed uh, on the uh, compute nodes and. Uh, we, we offered uh, five uh, different uh, uh, profiles ranging from pass-through configuration, so the entire GPU to be assigned to a VM and to partition uh, the VM to four uh, GP vGPUs and assign them uh, to four different uh, uh, VMs running on the same uh, node. All the v uh, GPU profiles were assigned to VMs using uh, specific uh, VM flavors for each profile. So final, uh, our, our next step is to uh, regarding infrastructure integration with our uh, other internal system for better uh, monitoring, logging, phasing out uh, a gradually uh, rocky cluster and move all nodes to Surrey, operating, maintaining, upgrading the new versions. Always we try to follow the latest version, both in OpenStack and Ceph. Federation, we plan to federate uh, our cloud infrastructure with our member states and we have a potential a good use case uh, uh, to federate. But uh, again, it's uh, still a work in progress. 
also integrate with uh, and interface with other um, projects. Uh, so your program with the cloud would be interfacing with the digital twin earth, part of the destination earth program of uh, EU. And also there are some other European uh, projects that uh, can be considered uh, for integration, like the open, uh, European Open uh, Science Cloud, etc. So also we plan to contribute more for uh, code and uh, to the OpenStack community and also help other users that are uh, facing the same problems that we faced while, while we were um, deploying our clusters and uh, Ceph. So this slide concludes my presentation about the uh, European with the cloud uh, uh, infrastructure built with open source. And I think that I covered the, the whole journey from, uh, from the beginning to the current uh, uh, day and what we plan to do in the future. Thank you very much for attending and I would be happy to take your um, questions. Thank you.